Okay, so let's talk about multiplying vectors, um, particularly, you know, the dot product. So the, maybe you guys have heard of the other way of multiplying vectors, which is the cross product, um, but you don't need to know that for BCE, just the dot product here. Um, okay, I'm just going to pull out the ways now. Um, all right, so dot product or scalar product. Um, it's sort of like multiplying vectors together, um, but not really. Um, so what we do here is we multiply the like terms when we do a dot product. Um, so, you know, um, everything in front of I is multiplied with everything in front of I um, and everything in front of J and K, you know, and so on. Um, okay, so here we're going to multiply the two A's. So we get A1, A2, and then we're going to multiply the two B's, so B1, B2, and then we're going to sum them together. Um, pretty straightforward, um, pretty cool stuff. But it's pretty important. Um, so the full equation for the dot product, um, you guys might have seen this before, it's going to be cosine theta is equal to the dot product, so a dot b. Um, and that is the angle between these two vectors, so that probably there is theta. Um, so using that, um, we can try to find the angle between two vectors. We can um, rearrange this. Um, ooh, also, there's magnitudes out here. So magnitude of A, magnitude of B is at the front. Sorry, I almost forgot that. Um, we can, we can uh, rearrange this in terms of cosine theta, and we'll get this. So pretty, pretty straightforward there as well. Um, this is pretty important for proofs. Um, sometimes they'll, they'll ask, um, try show that, you know, vector A and B are perpendicular. Well, how do we do that? Um, we need to use the dot product. And if you guys remember, cosine pi over 2, or cosine 90 degrees, which happens when we're uh, perpendicular, is going to be equal to 0, right? So to show that two vectors are perpendicular, all we do is we show that the dot products are equal to 0. Okay. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, yeah, see that's here as well. Whenever we do the dot product of the same thing, um, you know, a dot a, um, what we end up getting is just the magnitude of a squared. Um, the reason that makes sense is that we do, um, so, you know, ai plus p and j. Um, let's say that this is a. If I take the dot product, what, what I'll get is a times a plus b times b right? and that's simply a squared plus b squared if we look at the magnitude of a that's going to be a squared plus b squared and then the square root of that and so then really this is the magnitude of a squared all right Hopefully that makes sense though. Um, all right, have a go at this. Um, I'll give you guys a couple minutes, maybe a minute or two on this one. I've already sort of talked about it. Um, and I spoiled the question to be honest, but hopefully um, you guys can have a go at this still.
Alrighty, hopefully that was enough time then. Um, let's sort of walk through it. Um, probably not going to spend too much time on it just because I've already talked about it earlier. So, to show that A, you know, and B are perpendicular, um, so, you know, given that, so I'm just going to write, given that um, A is perpendicular to B, Um, a dot b, or cosine, cosine theta, of, where theta obviously again is the angle between a and b. Um, I would write that down. You know, saying saying a statement that theta is the angle between a and b um, is zero. Um, a dot b is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times cosine theta as and then as cosine theta is zero, A dot B is also zero. Um, obviously, you know, when you write out a proof, you want it to be a lot more formal. So um, instead of just skipping this step here, I would say, you know, given that cosine theta is zero, as theta is equal to pi over two, um, a dot b is also equal to zero. Um, so yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Um, have a go at this as well. I'll give you guys a couple minutes on that one. Okay, dokie. Okay. Um, hopefully that was enough time to do this. All right, so um, whenever we want to find OM, um, so I assume this is um, AB. So we want to find um, first the midpoint. So I'm just going to draw out a scenario here. So this is here is A, um, and I assume B is probably like this. So we have the vector a, B, and M is here. And what we want to find is this here. We want to find O, M, right? Um, so what we can do is um, we can find the position of A, M, and then we can sort of backtrack. So um, first, first step is to find A, B, right? Um, Step one, find AB. So AB is going to be equal to AO plus OB. And that is going to be um, the negative of this plus this. So that's going to be 2 minus 1. So that's just going to be I plus 1 minus 1, which is going to be 0, and minus 1 minus 1, 
which is going to be minus 2k. So AB is equal to I minus 2k. So then AM, so this implies AM, yeah, sorry, I'm going to stop that off. Um, AM is going to be equal to half of that, so minus 2k over 2. Um, and now from here, what we do is we find, um, you know, we, we basically do the same thing here. We go AO and then OM, and then we rearrange. So um, to find OM, um, what we're going to do is we're going to do A, so we're going to do OA. plus a m and that should give us our answer there so oa is going to be equal to again i plus j plus k and am is just all of that over two so um i over two plus one is going to be three over two so three over two i plus j plus 1k minus 1, and it's just going to be 0, plus 0. So all we're left with for OM is 3 over 2i plus j. Cool. Uh, nice and easy there. Um, pretty tedious, but overall, I think, pretty simplistic. Okay. Um, now we want to find the angle between um, OA and M. So, um, so is this angle? Yeah. Probably. Um, actually, it might be, it's probably this angle here. Um, the, the way we know uh, what angle we're looking for is that it's whatever the middle one is. So in this case, it's the angle near A. So O, A, and then M. Makes sense that that angle there is the angle we're looking for. So what we're doing is the dot product between um, probably OA and AM. So OA dot OM divided by the magnitude of OM dot OA sorry my handwriting's kind of gone wacky all. and then now we just plug that into cosine theta um, I'm not going to work it out um, just in the interest of time because I don't want to get through more content um, and for BMO what we do is um, we're trying to find this angle here So uh, B, M, and O, um, that's, so what we're doing here is now the dot product between M, B, or well, actually we're doing the dot product between, um, um, probably, uh, hmm, B to M, that gives us one vector, and M to O. Uh, yeah, we're going to be doing the dot product between B, M, and MO. And we're dividing that by the magnitudes again. BM, MO. I equate that to cosine theta. Um, once you work out what this is, you do arc cosine and then you'll figure out your answer there. 